this is London. The Air Ministry have just issued the following communicate. In the early hours of this morning, a force of Lancasters of Bomber Command, led by Wing Commander G.P. Gibson, DSO, DFC, attacked with mines the dams of the Myrna and Sorba reservoirs. These control two-thirds of the water storage capacity of the Ruhr Basin. Reconnaissance later established that the Myrna Dam had been breached over a length of 100 yards and that the power station below had been swept away by the resulting floods. Eight of the Lancasters are missing. The Dam Busters raid has been described as the most daring episode of the war. Only a few were told the full story at the time, but when Wing Commander Guy Gibson and his crews were visited by King George VI, the world began to wonder. Newsreel pictures of the King's visit hinted at the importance of the Dam Busters mission, but only later did we learn of the devastating effect of the raid on Germany's war potential. Guy Gibson explained to the King how power stations have been demolished and war factories have been flooded. With typical RAF understatement, the King and Queen were told what had happened. At Buckingham Palace, a little more of the story came out when Guy Gibson and his team of 617 Squadron were invited to an investiture. 33 were decorated and Guy Gibson was given the Victoria Cross. Twelve years have gone by, and now the Dambusters meet again at a reunion in London. There are all too few survivors, and some of them have come from as far as Canada to rejoin old comrades. And with them, too, is the behind-the-scenes boffin who suggested the target of the dams and invented the bouncing bombs to breach them, Dr. Barnes Wallace. Guy Gibson came back in triumph from the dam busting, but a year later there was another raid from which he never returned. But tonight his father is here proudly to represent him. Like all reunions of men who have fought side by side, there are stories of the past, of favorite chronicles of tragedy and triumph. One almost legendary character is Mickey Martin, perhaps the greatest bomber pilot. Canadian Joe McCarthy swaps memories with Air Chief Marshal Sir Rafe Cochrane, his old group commander. They've gathered together for a special occasion. For on the 12th anniversary of the raid, on the 16th of May, the dam busters are invited to see themselves as others will see them. Now their story can be told. Civilians tonight, but dam busters for all time, Jimmy Buckles, Basil Fenneran, Dudley Heel. Mickey Martin, now an air attaché overseas, talks over the old days with Bill Townsend and Dudley Heel. Together tonight, are some of those who flew to Germany that night in 1943 and some who helped to make it possible. Here too are the women who waited at home and perhaps there are the shadows of those who never came back. Barnes Wallace, the man who designed the Wellington bomber, was the man who persevered with the idea of bursting the dams and invented the bombs to do the job. He gave the 10,000 pounds, which is his country's award for his work, to educate the sons and daughters of men who died in the RAF. Guy Gibson's father was there on this memorable day, not only the anniversary of the raid, but also his 78th birthday. Susan Thorne, the daughter of a master bomber, gives a clue to the occasion, for she is to present a bouquet to Princess Margaret, because this is the evening of a royal premiere. A British film of the Dam Busters will picture to the world their supreme deed of courage and self-sacrifice. This is more than a film premiere. This is a tribute to the Royal Air Force.
And now Princess Margaret arrives at the theater, a radiant figure in the bright lights of Leicester Square. Tonight, the Royal Air Force has taken over, and RAF charities will benefit. In the foyer, Princess Margaret is greeted by the Secretary of State for Air, Lord Delilah Dudley, himself a VC, and by Marshal of the Royal Air Force, Lord Tedder and Lady Tedder. A guard of honor from the young Royal Air Force lines the route through the theater for Her Royal Highness, and a distinguished audience of all ranks of the RAF awaits her inside the theater. But first, the presentations. Susan, representing all the sons and daughters of the RAF, presents her bouquet. Then, one by one, they're presented to Princess Margaret, one or two officials and one or two filmmakers, but mostly those who belong to the Dam Busters. The actors in the film are represented tonight by one man, Richard Todd, who had the honor to play the part of Guy Gibson. Then Dr. Barnes Wallace, the man whose idea the raid was. After presenting his wife and daughters, he introduces these youngsters. Each lost a father, killed in action on Royal Air Force duty. It was then that Lord Tedder presented the Dambusters themselves some of the few who are left to keep alive the story of that night exactly 12 years ago when 19 Lancasters took off for Germany. For Eve, the widow of Guy Gibson, a special word. Tonight will bring back much of the past to her. Then came the mothers. So much grief lies beyond those simple words. Eight Lancasters failed to return. A special word too for Mr. A.J. Gibson. The presentations are brief, the formalities are simple for everyone is anxious to see on the screen the story of the Dam Busters. On this night, Princess Margaret, and on the following evening, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester came to take part in this tribute to the Royal Air Force and to this brave story of our own times. and Mr. Barnes Wallace, sir. Hello, Matt. Wallace? Good morning. What is it you want? I've got an idea for destroying the Ruhr dams. The effects on Germany would be enormous. I know all that. I've read the report. Do you really think you can knock down a dam with that thing? Yes. Well, it looks clever enough on paper. That goes for all these wheezy ideas. You try to make them work, they fall down flat. This one doesn't. How do you know? We've tested it and proved it. I've got some films here I would like you to see. Well, if you prove the thing, why hasn't it been taken up? I don't know. Two more beers, please. There's 11 DFCs already and three bars. You can bet your boots is going to be something big. They say it's a special squadron to kidnap Hitler. Who's that big dark fellow by the table? Oh, that's Young, Gibson's second in command. Dingy Young, they call him, because he always comes down on the sea and paddles home in his rubber boat. Oh, my God.
of bad business, isn't it? Yes, I'm afraid it is. What are you going to do? I think I know the trouble. I must work on it again. Well, here we are, the 22nd of April. Deadline date for the raid, the 19th of May. That's barely four weeks. Give me a few more days. A week, at most. If we're going to change the design, the factories will never do it I shan't time. change the design. I must just strengthen the casing and try a new method of release. Oh, well, a week from today. If it doesn't work then, we shall have to call it off. There's nothing else we can do. London, the bright lights of Leicester Square receive an added glitter as personalities like Mr. Alexander Gibson, father of the real-life hero of the film Dam Busters, arrives for the film's royal premiere. The film tells the story of the air raid led by Wing Commander Guy Gibson, played by Richard Todd, on the great Ruhr dams of Myrna and Zorpa. Young star Janet Scott is given an enthusiastic welcome by the crowds who brave the rain to watch the personalities arrive. Film and television star Patrick Barr arrives at the theater as Richard Todd chats to film industry executives. The camera follows Air Commodore Mills, new chief of Bomber Command. Dr. Barnes Wallace, the inventor of the special dam-busting bomb, and Air Marshal Sir Robert Sornby and Lady Sornby. Chatting to Marshal of the Royal Air Force Lord Tedder and Lady Tedder is Lord Talisle and Dudley. As the guest of honour arrives, Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret, escorted by Mr. Billy Wallace. Cheers and admiration greet the princess who wears for the premiere a diamante embroidered strapless gown of heavy satin under an ermine stone. Princess Margaret does indeed present a radiant figure as she enters the theatre to meet Lord Delisle and Dudley, who is Secretary of State for Air, and Lord and Lady Tedder. Now Her Royal Highness meets the film industry executives who have helped organize the premiere or are connected with the film, while survivors of the real life dam busters wait in the lounge to be presented. An RAF Guard of Honor lines the princess's route through the theater as she goes on to receive a bouquet from Susan Thorne, daughter of the Secretary General of the Pathfinders Association. The association, together with the Royal Air Force Association and other RAF charities, will benefit by about £7,000 from tonight's show. From Dr. Wallace, the princess learns of the five-ton bomb he invented to breach the dams, a crippling blow to the German war effort of which these men, actual survivors of the raid, can always be proud. The princess's father, the late King George, personally decorated these men for their part in the raid giving the VC to the leader, Guy Gibson, who was killed later in the war, 
and whose widow the princess now meets. A proud moment for the men of the dam-busting 617 squadron and those they left behind. Their widows and mothers here tonight by special invitation. A fitting commencement to the premiere of a film about their men's heroic exploits.